Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and with me is the Ride One Up 700 series, a value priced electric commuter bike that packs a whole lot of performance and a whole lot of name brand componentry into a package that just doesn't cost very much money. But how does it stack up into the real world? We're gonna put it to the test today to find out. Ride One Up is a bit of a sleeper company in the affordable e-bike space. The California-based brand makes e-bikes, they're fairly muted. A lot of them are this nice gray color. They kind of fly under the radar, and I really like that look, especially in a commuter bike. You don't always want a bike that's kind of loud and proud when it's locked up to a bike rack, something that thieves are gonna really kind of gravitate towards. This has that nice kind of under the radar aesthetic. But underneath that muted aesthetic is an e-bike that's really fast and really high performing. It's built around a 750 watt rear hub motor and a 672 watt hour battery that's fully integrated into the frame. And Ride One Up really positions itself as a value affordable e-bike company, especially compared to some of the bigger name brands in this space. All of these bikes are fairly cheap, but these ones come in at a price point that's several hundred in many cases less than some of the more bigger name brands in the affordable e-bike space. But despite that affordable personality, their bikes are chock full of name brand components that really just give them a leg up on some of the other competition. Some of these brands are like the Schwalbe Supermoto X tires. These are some of my favorite e-bike tires, no matter what, they're phenomenal for commuting applications. You also get a full Shimano Acera drivetrain, which it is very much worth noting that Shimano Acera is eight speed, whereas most of the bikes in the affordable e-bike space come with Shimano Altus, which is seven speeds. So you're actually getting one more gear, which gives you a little bit bigger of a ratio and a little bit nicer of a shifting experience. In addition to that, you're also getting Tektro HD E350 hydraulic disc brakes. Now these brakes are super reliable. We've tested them on many, many e-bikes and among the affordable, uh, among the brakes that we see on affordable e-bikes, these are some of our favorites. Not only do they perform really well, but because it's a name brand, many bike shops are gonna be able to service them far easier than brakes from like Zoom or Bangle or some of these other affordable, but a little bit more obscure brake companies. And aside from this, you just get a really nice, a nicely appointed electric commuter bike. You've got a rear rack, you've got integrated front and rear lights and a suspension fork, all the things you'd really hope for in a bike that would be theoretically replacing your daily driver. The Ride One Up 700 series is specced with a set of Tektro HD E350E hydraulic disc brakes. Now this is a two piston setup, which means there's two pistons on either side of the caliper that clamp down on 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. This is a really good name brand braking setup that we know well and have tested quite often to good results. And for that reason, I have quite a bit of faith that this bike is gonna perform well in our braking test. We bring the bike up to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brakes as hard as we can five times to get the bike's average stopping distance. Now let's see how this bike does in the real world. The Ride One Up 700 series did fairly well in our braking test, coming to a stop an average of 13 feet and 5 inches. That is a really nice result that's above our current average of all of the bikes we've put through this test, which is at about 16 feet or a little bit less. So 13 feet, five inches is more than a couple of feet better than that. So all around a good result from the 700 series. So to get an idea of what kind of range you can expect out of this 672 watt hour battery, we put it to the test in two separate range tests, the first in PAS1 and the second in PAS5. In that PAS1 test, we got a result of 45.05 miles before the bike died, and then in PAS5, it came out to 27.64 miles before it died. 
Those are both really good distances out of this battery, especially considering it's having to power a energy hungry 750 watt rear hub motor. That's a good result out of a 672 watt hour battery and one that is actually fairly competitive in its category. One last thing I wanna note about these range tests, and I don't often like to put a lot of weight into how fast they go, because we do do these tests on bike paths where we're dealing with things like hills and wind and dog walkers and people pushing strollers where we have to fluctuate our speed very often. But in that PAS5 test, this bike averaged over 20 miles per hour over the course of 27.64 miles, which is a really fast average speed. I did this test and I can personally attest that it is very nice right now. It's springtime in Southern Utah. There were a ton of people on the path that I was having to slow down to pass safely. And this bike still put up a very fast average speed. It's a class three e-bike. It's very quick. It's got a really good battery life and it's a lot of fun to ride. The Ride One Up 700 series is powered by a 750 watt rear hub motor. And this is a class three e-bike, meaning that rear hub motor is capable of speeds up to 20 miles an hour using just the bike's throttle and 28 miles an hour if you're using pedal assist. Now it's broken into five levels of pedal assistance, one through five, and the motor is actuated by a cadence sensor, which picks up whether or not you're actually turning the cranks. Like a lot of affordable e-bikes, that cadence sensor is good, but it's not absolutely perfect. You do see a little bit of a lag when you start pedaling and stop pedaling to when the motor can either figure out you want it to turn on or if you want it to turn off. One thing that's nice is those Tektro hydraulic disc brakes do come with a motor kill switch. So as soon as you tap the brake, the motor turns off whether you're pedaling or not. This is a nice feature with cadence sensor bikes, which aren't totally perfect, but this one is pretty good. We did put this bike to the test around our electric bike report circuit to get an idea of how those five levels of pedal assistance perform. And this is a really nice pedaling e-bike and it actually has a really good power distribution between levels one through five. It's one of the few we've tested recently where pedal assist one didn't feel totally useless. It actually had a nice little bit of get up and go and gave you some good assistance even in that lowest level. And then on PAS5, this bike is an absolute ripper. Again, it's capable of up to speeds up to 28 miles an hour. And while a lot of class three e-bikes actually like to sit kind of in that 24 mile an hour range, this one really does go up to 28 miles an hour and cruise there very comfortably so it's fast it's fun it's a really nice performing 750 watt motor handling wise the 700 series rides really really nicely it's again it's a fairly standard commuter bike it's got a suspension fork up front that's going to help absorb some of the road vibration and like maybe if you have to go over a curb or something like that but overall it's a very neutral handling bike it has a nice upright riding position that's going to be comfortable for most people that upright riding position is supported by a very broad comfort saddle it's from Cella Royale and I find it fairly comfortable in corners, it's very, very confidence inspiring. It seems to handle taking corners at higher speeds very well, which is very good considering that this is a class three e-bike that has no problem carrying its speed. And overall, I just really like to see nicely designed and nicely handling e-bikes, especially when they're capable of going as fast as this one is. Cockpit wise, you've got a fairly standard commuter cockpit. It's got alloy riser bars on it, a thumb throttle on the left hand side, and then you have a nice full color LCD display on the left hand side. Um, the last version of the Ride One Up that I rode, which was the 500 series, the bike below this one, it didn't have a color display. And I like the fact that this one does. That's a nice little upgrade. Overall, it's a nice riding, a nice feeling e-bike. So to get an idea of how well the Ride One Up 700 series climbs hills, we're gonna put it to the test on our test hill hell hole. Now hell hole is a third of a mile long, it's a 12% gradient on average, and it's plenty to put the 750 watt rear hub motor to the test. So let's see how it performs. All right, this is the throttle only test of the Ride One Up 700 series. Let's see how this thing goes. Pretty good so far. We've got a lot of momentum going up to the bottom. But very quickly losing that on this steep section. 
torque is not really this bike's strongest suit, so we'll see if it can clear this. It's gonna struggle. If we get much down closer to three, I'm gonna have to start balancing. Oh, well, we're gaining speed again. Hello. Hello. You good? much better than the throttle. Be on your left. It's amazing what just a little extra torque from your legs can do for a motor like this. Really not having to put too much energy in. It's basically giving the motor a little assist. It's like an opposite e-bike. Of the motor giving you assistance, you're giving the motor just a little bit. Hello. on your right. <laughs> so we did two test runs up our test hill hellhole, the first in PAS5 and the second in just the throttle only. And we actually had some surprising results considering this is a 750 watt rear hub motor. In the PAS5 test, it made it to the top in 1 minutes and 32 seconds with an average speed 11, of 11.8 11 miles per hour, which is fairly good. But in the throttle-only test, this bike actually didn't clear the hill. It made it about two-thirds of the way up before it kind of petered out. And that's a surprising result considering that this is a 750 watt rear hub motor. We typically see motors of this size clearing this hill fairly easy. Maybe they have a little bit of trouble, slow down in some of the steeper sections and then regain their speed. And this one actually ended up dying on the second steepest section of the hill, which is usually actually the toughest part for most of these bikes. But it's still not a bad climbing e-bike. I want to really stress that. This hill is very long, it's very steep, it's very much designed to push, push bikes to the limit, and it's also not a good example of what you might find in your typical commuting ecosystem. Hills in cities are not really built like this. This is actually very unique even to see on a bike path a hill this steep. So before you go chalking this thing up to a bad hill climbing e-bike, I would really stress that it's not. It took very little effort from my legs to help this bike get up the hill. It just needs a little bit of extra torque and it does just fine. So value really is the word of the day when it comes to the Ride One Up 700 series. There's just a lot of it packed into this thing for really not a lot of money. I'm very impressed with the price point. It's, at, it's listed at an MSRP of about $1,700, which is quite a couple of hundred at least cheaper than many of its competitors in the affordable electric commuter category. But despite that, you're actually seeing componentry and a ride quality that either rivals or is even better than many of the more expensive bikes from bigger name brands. 
One thing I really want to point out is that Shimano Acera drivetrain. It has one more gear than Altus, which is kind of the standard across the board for the affordable electric bike category. And it has a little bit better shifting feeling, at least in my opinion it does. I just really like the fact that it has one more gear. What that does is it gives you less large steps in your gear range, which means you can do a better job of kind of fine tuning what you're asking for out of this bike. Now, while there's a ton that I really, really like about this bike, there are two things I'm gonna point out that I do feel like could be room for improvement or at least something to keep in mind when you're buying it. The first is that while that 750 watt motor is super fast and has no problem carrying its speed in really 90% of applications, it's not the torquiest. We saw that in our hill test Again, not a deal breaker for me. You don't need some torque monster for most places you're going to take a commuter bike, but it didn't do the best on our test hill hellhole. The last thing I want to point out is how the bike is actually shipped. Now, all direct to consumer e-bikes are shipped to some degree of pre-assembly. They're all put together to a little bit of, of an extent. This one was not very put together. It was, you had to install the cranks yourself, both wheels were off, the rack was off, and they do this to fit that into a very small box. It's actually more compact of a box than the average electric bike that we get shipped to us. But what that means is it's, it's fairly involved putting it together. And this is an e-bike that I would very much recommend you take to a bike shop to get assembled. I have 10 years of experience as a bike mechanic, and there are things on this that, you know, I, it took me some time to actually put it together. So for you, your average consumer at home, I'd very highly suggest you go to a bike shop and get this thing put together how it was designed to be done. Other than that though, I love this bike. It, they did a really great job with it. It rides well, it handles well, all of the componentry meshes together very, very well. And the best part about it is that it's cheaper than many of the other bikes in its category. If you enjoyed the, this review of the Ride One Up 700 series, be sure to like and subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel for more updates on Ride One Up and the other brands that we cover. Also, if you want to know more about the 700 series, be sure to click the link in the description below this video for more detailed write-up that also includes all of the data we collected during our testing. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.